Live from San Diego's news source, 10 News starts now. Tonight, 10 News has uncovered major developments into the tragic death of San Diego sports hero Junior Seau. What a neighbor told us about a telling conversation that he had with Seau just weeks ago. And then there's this, a message left in the sand outside Seau's home, which may be his final words to his parents. Right now, there is still a crowd outside Seau's home. From his high school to his Mission Valley restaurant, 10 News has a team of reporters working every angle to this story tonight. And we begin with 10 News reporter Vanessa Van Hefti, live where the tragic story unfolded this morning. Vanessa. You know, Steve, I just heard a fan saying this is a sad day for San Diego, and that's the truth. You can look here behind me and see uh, this memorial continues to grow. There has been a crowd out here since this morning. So much heartbreak out here. Say how his family was here earlier tonight. They say there was no suicide note and no warning. Family members, including Sayo's father, left the house at 730 tonight. Louisa Seau left clutching a framed picture of her and her son. Police say the former Chargers linebacker shot himself once in the chest. His girlfriend returning home from the gym found him in his bedroom. Family rushed to the scene. His sister broke down. His mother inconsolable. I had a bad voice on a Wednesday morning. He never said something for me. Judah, hey. Why are you never telling me you're going? And I pray to God, take me, take me, leave my son alone. Fans came by the hundreds with tears in their eyes and heavy hearts, trying to understand how a man so loved and so full of life could have taken his own. That's just how we are in Oceans. Like we take care of each other, and the fact that we couldn't take care of Junior at a moment like this, that's why we're all so hurt. Like, we miss you, Junior. Like, what happened? Junior Seau was true to his roots, a star that never faded here in Oceanside. He didn't think he was better than anybody else. I think that's why a lot of people in Oceanside liked him because uh, he was, um, was a big part of Oceanside. Chargers pastor Sean Mitchell says his longtime friend is a San Diego icon who will forever be treasured. And I do pray as well that you will make great good come out of this and continue the legacy that is Junior Seau. Amen? Amen. You. Let's give him a hand, huh, guys? And Seau's parents say they were here Monday and Tuesday, but their son wasn't home. We're live on the Strand in Oceanside. Vanessa Van Hefty, 10 News. A crushing day for our community. Thank you, Vanessa. And we continue our team coverage at Seau's restaurant in Mission Valley, where a steady stream of people showed up throughout the day. 10 News reporter Itika Milanas is there live now with the mysterious message that one man says he saw written in the sand near Seau's house that he believes Seau wrote just before his death. Itika? Now that man was at Seau's Oceanside home before coming here and he says he noticed a huge message written in the sand that he says stopped him in his tracks. He believes that Seau is the man behind that message because he knows how close he was to his parents. Here at Seau's restaurant, several people still showing up at 11 o'clock to say goodbye. We all lost someone very important. Hundreds of people stopped by Seau's restaurant in Mission Valley Wednesday to say goodbye. Me and my father used to watch him when I was growing up. Wearing his junior Seau jersey, John Lawson struggled to hold back the tears as the shocking loss of the San Diego football legend started to sink in. I, I couldn't believe it. I told Junior how much I just, I loved him. Michelle Bonat will never forget meeting Seau at the restaurant 10 years ago when she was pregnant and what he did when she went into labor. Junior sent me a bouquet of flowers to the hospital. I still have that card to the day. He's got, he had a big, great, big heart. Johnny Martinez says as the athletic director of the Boys and Girls Club, he worked with Seau many times. Before coming to the restaurant, he went to Seau's Oceanside home directly across from the beach and saw something that took his breath away. And I walked down the steps and I looked to the right and there it was in the sand. A large handwritten message that he photographed with his cell phone and shared with 10 News. I will miss you, Mom and Dad. It was really surreal. Martinez says he has no doubt it was Seau's final message on earth. 
I weeped at that moment. It was a very stirring and trying moment for me. I did leave a message with Oceanside Police to tell them about that message and to share pictures with them, but I haven't heard back from yet yet. Sayo's restaurant never opened today, and mall security told me it will be closed again tomorrow. Now, just a couple of minutes ago, this group, most of them strangers, held hands and said a prayer for Junior Sayo. And just a few seconds ago, they broke into uh, clapping here. So a very strong day for Junior Seau here at his restaurant. We're live in Mission Valley. Itika Milanis, 10 News. And a sad day. 10 News has learned that Seau sent a text message to his ex-wife Gina and his children just yesterday telling them that he loved them. All replied back having no idea what was to come. Following news of his death this morning, Gina wrote one word on her Facebook wall, lost. The couple had three children together in Seau, had an older son from a previous relationship. And late tonight, Gina Seau released this statement to our media partner, UT San Diego, which reads, we are beyond sad and beyond shocked. The kids and I are just huddled together at home. There's no way to make sense of this. So sad. Seau was a hometown boy and left a huge legacy at his Oceanside High School. 10 News reporter Preston Phillips continues our live team coverage tonight where he spoke to one of Seau's coaches. Preston. And Steve, Junior Seau graduated from Oceanside High School 25 years ago. Since then, he's remained very involved here and in the community. As school let out today, the mood here on campus was very somber. The news of Junior Seau's death stunned Oceanside High School athletic director Dave Barrett. At first, I was, you're dumbfounded. Barrett was Seau's high school football defensive coach during the mid-80s. Junior was such a multi-talented athlete on the football field. Uh, he was a wide receiver. He was a quarterback. He could throw the football 80 yards in the air when he was 16 years old. Coach Barrett tells me he'll never forget the first day Seau tried out on this field for the varsity football team as a sophomore. Seau showed up two hours early for the first day of two-a-days. Coach Barrett says he stood in amazement as Seau was doing shuttle runs with his own stopwatch pushing himself when no one was on campus. The one thing I associate with Junior is passion. You know, that's just the way he practiced, the way he played. Uh, from the time he was 14 years old and the first time I met him here at Oceanside High School, it was passionate. Today, Seau's picture is proudly posted in Oceanside High's Senior Hall from when he was inducted into the school's Hall of Fame back in 2010, while his retired number 11 jersey will forever remain a fixture on the wall just outside the school's gymnasium. It's powerful seeing that up there. It is. It is. And uh, uh, again, Junior left, uh, left some indelible footprints here at Oceanside High School, and we're proud of, of the man he became. Oceanside High's assistant principal, Jessica Pumelli, remembers Seo as a senior at Oceanside High. She was in ninth grade at the time. He was definitely passionate, passionate about sports, passionate about life. And passionate about giving back. Last fall, Seau donated this patch obstacle course located in the back of the campus, used daily by hundreds of students. And that obstacle course is a small part of what Seau's given back over the years. In 1992, the Junior Seau Foundation was established. Since then, nearly $4 million has been distributed to organizations providing services to children and young adults. Reporting live tonight from Oceanside, Preston Phillips, 10 News. Preston, thank you. And for as much good as Seau did in our community, he also made headlines for a bizarre incident back in 2010. It happened on October 17th. Seau was arrested at his Oceanside home on domestic violence charges. He was released on the morning of October the 18th and drove off a cliff at Carlsbad State Beach about five hours later. He wasn't seriously hurt and later said he fell asleep. And Seau's suicide comes as more than 1,200 former professional football players have sued the NFL. Well, they say the league concealed a link between concussions and what one top expert calls mental disease in players. Our 10 News investigative reporter Mitch Blocker found out that Seau told one friend he wanted to prove the link after his death. For Seau family friend Joe Gallagher, it was a comment that almost went unnoticed, a comment he says Seau made recently. Junior had wanted to donate his brain to science for the study of concussive injuries. Seau's suicide follows that of former Steeler Terry Long, former Falcon Ray Easterling, and former Bear Dave Dewerson. Dewerson also wanted to donate his brain to science. He left a suicide note talking about his desire to learn more about football-related head injuries. Like Seau, he shot himself in the chest. There's no question in my mind 
that it's directly linked to brain injury. Dr. Daniel Amen, a Newport Beach brain doctor, has studied NFL brain injuries and is convinced suicide and brain trauma are linked. His analysis supports a Boston University study which found at least 20 retired NFL players with brain disease after they finished their careers. The doctor treated more than 100 former NFL players and says you can rehab a brain injury like you'd rehab a knee. What we see is 80% of our players show high levels of improvement after just a couple of months. But Dewerson, Long, and Easterling never got help. The medical examiner's report says Long's history of brain injury was a significant factor in his death. When Easterling shot himself, his wife described him as being badly damaged, both physically and mentally, from his playing career. Signs Gallagher says he never saw in his friend. If you had told me even this weekend when I saw him, it's like, I wouldn't have believed it. I'm Mitch Blocker, 10 News. From his humble beginnings in Oceanside, Seau transformed himself into an NFL star. And Ben Higgins is here now with some of Junior's own words and the shocked reaction from Chargers Park. Ben? Hey, Kim, Junior Seau once said the only thing he was afraid of was being average. And while Seau was many things, he was never average. Drafted by the Chargers in 1990 out of USC and Oceanside High School, Junior Seau was passionate about the game of football. It's a game, it's a sport to me, and I love it. He led the Chargers to their one and only Super Bowl in 1995 and graced the cover of Sports Illustrated. Off the field, he was devoted to his parents. They sacrificed so much for us, you know, coming to the States, not knowing any English, uh, raising six kids here. As much as he loved football and family, Junior also had the gift of gab and never passed up a chance to inspire. Work today. Don't worry about tomorrow because you know what? If you work today, it's going to help tomorrow. Seau's positive outlook is making it even harder for those close to him to understand his death. Chargers president Dean Spanos was his friend for 23 years. Anytime you lose a friend, I mean, what can you say? I mean, you're just at a loss for words. Football player, father, son, humanitarian, friend. And one other thing, according to Norv Turner. He always would say to me, you know, I'm always a Charger. And I, I went to Miami, I went to New England, but I'm always a Charger. Always a Charger. Inducted into the Chargers Hall of Fame in November and a virtual lock for the Pro Football Hall of Fame in three years. A major loss indeed. Tragically, he is the eighth player from the 1994 Chargers Super Bowl team to suffer an untimely death. I'm Ben Higgins, 10.